Good evening. Let me start with a story. Imagine my mom, as all good stories should start. She's 44 years old, getting on a boat, nine months pregnant, with nine other kids, my dad, and an 80-year-old grandma. They had to cross some very treacherous waters to leave Vietnam and to get to safe harbors. These waters had claimed the lives of many of their friends and family members. But she knew that she had to get out. It was dangerous and it wasn't gonna be a future for her kids. They eventually make it to Portland, Oregon, where they become migrant farm workers for three years. Me, by the way, I was that kid in the stomach, strapped to her back oftentimes. We probably would have stayed there for a long time, except my grandma started having dementia. And so they had to find family and friends who can help take care of her. So they moved to Oakland, California, one of the more dangerous impoverished and polluted communities in the country at the time in the 80s. There, they graduated from being migrant farm workers to being sweatshop workers. And that's what they did until I went to college. So my sisters and brothers did when they were old enough. That's what I did when I was coming of age. When I was going to college, my mom's one dream for me was to get as far away from Oakland as possible. In her mind, the purpose of education was to escape poverty. What I learned, because you go to Cal and you learn all of these ideas, <laughs> you become a vegetarian and you have ideas. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and what I learned was <laughs> that the purpose of my education wasn't to escape poverty, but it was to learn how we can begin to end it. Yeah. Somebody please save that applause and send that clip to my mom. <laughs> She's really happy, no. Um, so the work that I've been doing has been around how do we figure out solutions to poverty and pollution? And that has been the work of my career and my life. I'm here wearing really two hats. I'm wearing the hat of Green for All, where I helped to pass over 20 policies around the country in many states, but also wearing the hat of the deputy CEO of Dream Corps and helping to lead Van Jones' federal strategy and work around the country. And yes, he is as great a person as he looks on TV. <laughs> Um, and we do this incredible work with many people around the country. And what I have learned is this. The solutions have to start with working with the people who are impacted the most. And they are the people who are at ground zero that best understand what kind of solutions work and don't work. And, yeah. So, we did a segment on the messy truth. Van interviewed coal miners, and they asked, what is it, you know, what made you vote for this guy, he's Trump, you know? And, um, and why against Hillary? Was it because she was talking about ending the coal industry? And did you really believe all of Trump's promises? And they said, no. Actually, we don't think coal is a revivable industry. We know it's dead. But we, what we also know is that what we saw from Hillary's campaign was that there was no hope in sight for us, that there was not gonna be change for us, that they ignored the, the future of our kids, and we needed the country to have a wake-up call. And that's what's why they voted Trump. And that was so important for me, because oftentimes when people talk about the importance of unity, it sounds nice, but it's also an imperative because the people you leave behind will know that you left them behind. And they will take action. 
And it's not a winning strategy. You want the solutions to be comprehensive, and you really want to engage the people who are impacted most. Because the truth is, everybody in this country wants their kids to have a better life. We share that in common. And the question is, are we going to do it just for our kids or for the kids of this entire country? And that's why WEC's work is so important. WEC, for those of you who don't know, WEC staff and board and members came together on an issue last election cycle. And they fought for equity and justice, and they worked in unity with labor, environmentalists, EJ organizations, tribal communities, across the board. And it was at a time when it was not an easy decision. And what we saw from WEC was the moral leadership and courage, because it takes courage to do something unpopular, to actually rally people to work together. And that is why I flew out here today, because I just wanted to say thank you in person. Thank you, because when we were seeing what was happening in Washington State, what a lot of social justice organizations saw was that the allyship, the moral courage, actually brought us up. And now what it's going to lead to is to be a case study around what can happen when people come together. And I really want to give Becky, Joan, and the WEC staff a big round of applause for their heart. And um, I want to maybe wrap up by saying a little bit of why this matters. I, I do a lot of talks these days, and I'm actually going to do a talk. Um, I'm going to be the opening keynote to the EU in Brussels in, um, in the summer. And um, thank you. I'm not sure how I feel about that either. Um, <laughs> The, you know, when I was preparing to go, I talked to essentially the chief of staff to the EPA for the European Union's commission. And I asked, you know, I can read the news and I can see what's happening um, in the papers, but tell me, what is the political climate there now? How do people feel about the election results of the United States? What's the impact of Brexit to the EU? What's going on? What's the, what's the political, you know, temperature and landscape? And he said, they didn't understand it at the time, but Brexit and what the country and the populist movement now in the European Union has created is a move away from the progressive values and the climate work that we've been doing for a really long time. And it has had penetrating impacts across the parliament, the council, and the commission. And that's the growing trend that we are fighting against, that we really are fighting against. It's not just a Washington thing. It's not even a other Washington thing. It's a global thing. And so the work here in Washington State sends a beacon of hope that there are people working together, leading with heart, and leading to do what's right. And I will say, here's, here's why it matters. The famous clinical psychologist who talked about the five stages of grief she also said them something really important that I think we must understand in this moment. There are only two basic emotions. There's love and fear. And fear is the driver behind anxiety and stress and depression and all of these things. And love is where you create solutions and community and joy and where you work together. And as long as you're stuck in fear, you can't actually be in the world of love and solutions making. It's, it's just, they're mutually exclusive. But the good note is, what we're seeing now in Washington State brings us a spark of hope and continues to keep us in a space of possibilities. And I know that there's a lot of fear in the country, but I, I want you to remember this moment, which is, I'm gonna ask a few questions and yes, I'm very Bay Area, and I'm very woo-woo, and I used to be a teacher, and I will make it really awkward until you guys all participate. <laughs> so, by a show of hands, how many of you felt better after the November election last year? 
All right. By show of hands, how many of you felt worse after the election last year? Yeah. You can put your hands down and <laughs> you guys are really participating. That's, I love that. You get an A. Uh, now, the most important question is this. How many of you got so worried that you became more engaged, more active, and more invested in the work of your community and in the country after the election? Look around. I really want you to look around. Because there will be times when you open the papers or you read the news and you will get really sad and you will get really scared. Do not stay there. Remember that this room and all the people who raised their hands to say they got more engaged, that they got more excited, that they got more invested in the community. And that is the groundswell that we're seeing not only around the country, but I think really globally. Because remember the Women's March and all the pictures that came out. And while we may have all come in on different ships, we are all now in the same boat. And I am so thankful to be working here with you and in the boat with you. Thank you.